So this is the rough sketch and that's how you want your rough sketch to look like, neat and clean. Now once you're ready with that, you want to import a paper texture. You can download these from Freepik and you just want to add it as an image on Autodesk Sketchbook and just change layer mode to multiply and reduce the opacity to create that paper texture kind of effect. If you want, if you don't want to create that effect, you can completely skip this step. Now to make sure that your sketch line are ready for watercolor painting you want to pick up a smudge brush and what you want to do is make sure the opacity or the flow of the brush is really low you want to make sure that you are smudging these sketch lines out not completely to the point where you cannot see them anymore but the end result should look something like that before we start, I'm just going to show you the shading technique we're going to use. The brush I'm using is wet frayed bristles and the brush type is standard. I'm just going to show you the technique that we're going to follow throughout the painting. So what you want to do is you want to pick your color up and you want to add this color in a way where you're making sure it's um, adding pigmentation, high pigmentation of the color. Now once you have that, we're going to use the same brush to blend this color, alright? And you're going to do it by playing around with the pressure sensitivity of your pencil or whatever you're using your stylus to make sure that you are putting really high pressure onto the screen when you are blending when you're going from that high pigmented color towards the lighter color and when you're moving towards the lighter color you want to make sure the pressure you're putting on the screen is really really light all right so this is going to give us such a result then you want to turn your brush type to colorless brush and you want to make sure the flow of the brush is not that much and here what we're going to do is you don't want to wash the color out like this by going over the hole that's not what we're going to do what we're gonna do is we're gonna just focus on the edges of this color and want to make sure that we are putting really less pressure over this thing so that we are not washing it out that's not our goal all right so that's how you want to do it that's how we're going to be blending the colors out and that's how it is going to end up looking all right so we'll be going back and forth from standard brush type to colorless brush type throughout the process sometimes you're not even gonna need the colorless brush type if you like what you did with just the standard brush type but that's how the transition is actually gonna look like now for the colors we are just using three colors which are really highly saturated because we don't need desaturated colors in this process as i just showed you guys in the technique when we are gonna shade these colors out we're naturally gonna get that desaturated lighter color out of these colors so that's why we don't need a bigger palette all we need is just three colors which are really highly saturated now I'm going to start with the painting process. So I made sure that my brush type is standard. I'm just adding the colors like this. Obviously I was following and looking at a reference at the time. So it's up to you if you want to follow this process or if you want to have your own reference. This tutorial is all about how you correctly do watercolor painting on Autodesk Sketchbook. And also I wanted to show you guys the technique that I use to actually create amazing watercolor paintings. So I am switching back and forth from my colors to add these colors in a way where I'm making sure it's adding a lot of pigment of the color. As you guys can see, I am not filling out the whole shapes. I'm only adding this color where I'm seeing highly saturated colors on the reference itself. So that's where you want to add these colors. So I'm going to do this and just speed up the process and come back with color placed on these rose petals. So now I'm ready with the base coloring. I am picking up the color red from the mid portion of this rose and following the technique, the shading technique that I showed you guys, I am blending this color out and I'm using that similar brush and the brush type is standard. I'm not using a colorless brush just yet. And when I was happy with that, I changed it to colorless brush and I kind of went over what I did really lightly so that I I'm not washing it all out so 
that's the thing I'm going to be following throughout the rows. Obviously, a reference is going to be really helpful as to where you want to push that color. But if you don't have a reference, it's completely fine because this rose watercolor painting is really, really easy once you really get the hang of that technique. So I'm switching back to the standard and I'm just actually going to blend everything out just using the technique I showed you initially. So that, that was the most important part. Here, I'm just speeding up the process so that you guys can see how I'm applying that technique on the real rows and how I'm actually painting the rows. So I'm just going to speed up the process so that you guys can see that because there's going to be a lot of back and forth, but all I'm doing is just following the technique. Now, once you're happy, what you're going to do is pick up your colors, create a new layer, and we're going to put back some color onto this rose because we did lose some of the color, some of the pigmentation of the color we originally added. So I'm going to pick the red, the dark brown, and also the pink color. I'm going to add that color really lightly wherever I think the color washed itself out because of the shading. Now create another layer and what we're doing here is we're creating really light and natural looking line art or just outlining the whole rose. When I say natural looking, I mean it should be light and it shouldn't have any harsh edges. It should look soft and light. So that's going to be the perfect way to create an outline structure for this natural looking rose painting. So that's what I'm doing here. It's also going to add some depth. And as you guys can see, the rose painting is done and it's actually looking absolutely stunning it's the easiest process ever if you follow the technique correctly you can literally create any watercolor painting this technique is easy so i would highly recommend you guys practicing that if you are into watercoloring and also watercolor paintings is all about perfect shading that's all you need and there's like no one rule to create a watercolor painting because everything looks just amazing so i really hope you guys like this video if you did give this video a big thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next video.